that would be interesting to see, except you couldn't see it because it's a black hole and you can't see it, but you know. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Right then, this is Penny Racers on the N64, as you can probably see. It's by Takara, which I find really interesting because they made the original mo original models of this Dennis Fisher action figure thing that I had as a kid called Muton. It was Muton and Cyborg and Android. And I had Muton. It was a purple alien that you could take to bits. But that's beside the point. Do you know they're worth a, about a hundred and... They're worth crazy money now. Getting back to this, for start it says, I don't know anything about this, I've never played it, but it's obviously a racing game of some sort, and I like racing games. I'm pushing start, and it's not, this joypad sucks, start game. Drivers, we will play as driver. Race series, yeah, okay. Class C, probably, yeah, whatever. I'm just going with whatever it's, uh, hmm. Is that meant to be a Subaru? <laughs> and that's an MR2. That's a Ferrari. Well, we've got to be that, haven't we? What's that? That's a Porsche. I'm not sure about that. Land Rover, Range Rover, something like that. What's this? Mm, not sure. Okay. So, dust cart. What a Trans Am Firebird. Okay. Well, I am liking the variety of vehicles. Oh, that's a Mercedes A-Class. Huh. Well, I'm going to be the Ferrari, because why wouldn't you? I would. I love Ferraris. Though I prefer the more iconic, older stuff. Well, I like the 308 and 328 GTS. And I guess I like the F40 and the F50. I don't like the Testarossa. I don't really like the 360. I don't mind the 455. So, okay. I'm not really, uh, that, that, oh God, there seem to be pickups and weapons and things that I'm not really paying a lot of attention to. Okay, don't run over that. Oh, oh. Right shoulder buttons do stuff, and it's probably not an idea to use them. Other controls, not really sure. Okay, we have we, that, that. You can control the view with the little yellow buttons. I don't... Trigger button's not doing anything, but then I haven't picked up anything to, like, fire. Does the other shoulder button do anything? I can't actually reach it because N64 joypads are stupid. So we'll just have to presume it doesn't do anything. Wow, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know what to pick up and what, what to, what's going to do that to me. So it makes me not want to find out. What's this button? That's the brake. Okay. What's he doing? What the? Get off me! I'm not convinced I'm doing 100 miles an hour. I mean, that's what the speedo is saying, but I'm not convinced. I think it lies. Oof. There is a nice sort of frantic nature to this that's appealing. It would probably look better in higher resolution, but you can't have everything. Certainly not from this era anyway, like the 90s. I don't remember what, what year the N64 came out and was a thing. 97 is the number that's coming to my mind. It might have been a bit before that. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, get a move on. Well, 
I don't know what's happening. I've got no idea. Yeah, whatever. I, I, yeah, I don't know what any of that was. I mean, maybe I should have stopped and tried reading it, but I just didn't want to. <laughs> I tend to presume, keep, keep pushing the button until it does something. Your car. Yep, okay. Oh, look, it's raining. We're racing in Britain then. And we're off, slowly. In little, tiny cars. So, I mean, I don't get the feel of them being little, tiny cars. I guess they're like the, the equivalent of matchbox cars, but it doesn't feel that way. They just feel like big cars that have been sort of squashed and look weird. Because it's not like, um, oh god, what is it? I've forgotten the name of that series, you know, where you're in little toy cars racing on tabletop micro, micro machines. I think that's what I'm thinking of. It's not like that where, you know, you are racing on the tops of tables and, and racing around breakfast cereal and stuff like that with rubbers and pencils and things as obstacles. Here we are in what looks like a normal world but with super deformed cars. That's what they're calling that style, isn't it? Super deformed. Wow, there's a lot of body roll on this. I mean, Ferraris, that... Oh, you bugger. Where are they getting their power-ups from? I don't appear to have any. No weapons. Mm. Uh. Oh. I mean, there, there is a thing about playing a game, oh, for God's sake playing a game for the first time without instructions or any kind of tutorial and not knowing what you're doing where you can get frustrated where perhaps you wouldn't if you knew what you were doing and that does colour my opinion but some games you can just pick up and play and have fun instantly like, like I did just a few minutes ago or a week ago perhaps in your time um, Super Smash Brothers, never played it before, picked it up, played it, enjoyed it. This, um, I like the visual style as far as, uh, it's, it's as good as you can expect on an N64, really. I'm not a fan of their graphical capabilities or anything with the fogging and all of that, but you know, you get used to it, you come to expect it. I like the visual style. I like the sound design and the frantic nature of the game but if I'm really brutally honest I'm not having fun um, I mean not being anywhere near the competitors doesn't help but the fact that it's super deformed things, cars, in a fairly normal, if somewhat cartoonish, world setting. You know, that uh, I don't get the point. It's lost on me. Maybe that's not the fault of the developers. You know, maybe there, there's just a scene, or was a scene, that I was unaware of. Um, but as I play this, I just think I'd be having more fun on Mario Kart that playing that, that that just wasn't fun I'm almost certainly missing details and stuff like how you're meant to play it probably um, but that being the case it means in terms of being a pick up and play game it's not as pick up and play as Mario Kart if you've got to know how to play it to be able to play it it doesn't appeal to, to me so much. That doesn't make it a bad game. It just makes it not my kind of game. Um, when I'm playing modern games, I like 
depth and I like being able to take my time and learn how it works. Sometimes I can be frustrated by that, especially if there isn't an obvious way of learning it. But when it comes to retro games, I, re I play retro stuff because of the pick up and play nature of it. Especially when I'm making videos. Uh, it needs, to make a good video of a retro game, you've got to have a game that you can pick up and play without knowing what you're doing. And this isn't that. Um, not knowing what I'm doing meant I had a less than enjoyable game. Yeah, so it might be a good game, but it doesn't suit me. Okay, I'll shut up waffling because I'm definitely repeating myself. Thank you for watching. Okay, today's question for Q&A is from Leahy84. Link to their channel down there. They ask, for Q&A, if you were given the option to stop aging and live indefinitely, would you take it? What do you think you would do with unlimited time? What would you look forward to? What would you look forward to seeing in the future? Oh, that, that is a difficult question, isn't it? Um, I suppose I have to ask some questions. Uh, stop aging and live indefinitely. I because I, I pondered this and not thought about the stop aging, and I had visions of uh, David Bowie in The Hunger, who he was like became a vampire, so he he could live, what well, not die, but he continued to age until he was like just a living corpse if you like just skin and bone and couldn't move or do anything and, and just lay in a coffin with countless others in the same predicament um, but if you stop aging so you don't age you don't die from illness can you get killed like if there's a nuclear war or the planet is obliterated by a comet or some other calamity. Do you live through that? Um, I, uh, I suppose let's ignore that aspect. You don't age, you don't get ill, you don't die from... I don't know, minor accidents, shall we say. Um, yeah, annihilation of the planet probably takes you out. But, you know, you can get hit by a bus and live. Let's, let's say that. Um, yes, <laughs> I would choose to live forever. It's, it, it is a difficult one because there is that whole... Um, you see all the people you love die. And everyone who means anything to you will die um, and that's rough I mean uh, to be fair I've never had anyone who I've been close to die I've been really I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky it's a part of life that everyone experiences sooner or later um, my dad died I wasn't close to him I was unaffected um, never had anyone I've been in a relationship with die so I don't know what that's like and if I had been there and experienced that my answer could very well be different I had my heart broken I know what grief feels like um, and it ain't nice that you get through it so to go through that repeatedly grief is part of life and I think the idea of being able to live indefinitely I, I like being alive I love life even like every single day of my life these days I'm in pain but I'll take it. If you feel pain, you know you're alive. Um, to be fair, though, it's not extreme pain, and I think if it was, maybe I would feel different. So uh, if I'm going to stop aging, it needs to be pretty damn soon, please. <laughs>
I, I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be in physical agony and living forever thank you very much but yeah if I could stop aging right now and live indefinitely I would um, I mean f the, the whole going losing people you love I kind of I drift through people friends it's like I, I've isolated myself from most of my family um, could I see myself go through eternity drifting through people? Yeah, because that's how my life has been. Um, I don't have the friends I had in my 30s, and in my 30s I didn't have the friends I had in my 20s, and so on. Um, and there, there are things I would like to see. Uh, and it's kind of... I worry about the climate and climate change and is the world just going to be a burned up arid wasteland? Maybe. Don't think that would be too nice to live through. Um, but if we manage to not destroy the earth or destroy, destroy ourselves, I would love to know, can can we get out into space, like outside of our solar system, get to other stars, get to other planets, find alien life, find intelligent alien life? Can we do that? Don't know. Would like to be able to stick around and find out. I would love to be around, around to see how humanity progresses. Um, I'm fascinated by it. I watch lots of science documentaries and stuff. I mean, I've, I've watched I think every decent science doc God science documentary on um, Amazon Prime because um, th there are some really really good ones on there and the stuff on that makes me think you know that lots of what if they're finding out about how reality works, how the universe works, and that's something I'm really, really interested in. And I would like to see the answers to things. I want them to find out. You know, is there a multiverse? Are there multiple dimensions? Is time travel possible? Uh, what can you do with quantum effects? if you can harness them. Lots of stuff I want to know the answers to. Um, and it's the kind of thing that won't happen in my lifetime, a lot of it, and that disappoints me. So yeah, I mean it would be fascinating to see the Earth when the Sun expands and and will it or won't it swallow the earth or incinerate it or whatever how far out do you have to be not to be obliterated by it will we be on mars by then will we have moved elsewhere and got further out will we be long gone want to know these and other questions yeah i would take it um I mean, it would be nice to have an optional off switch. So, you know, when I've seen... <laughs> saying that, I am fascinated by the idea... This, again, is, is stuff I've been watching on Amazon Prime. A couple of images in my head. The galaxy, not the galaxy, the universe will reach a point because it's expanding where each galaxy will be so far apart from every other galaxy they will be further away than it takes for light to have time to reach us and will be traveling too fast accelerating away from us it will reach a point where the light from distant galaxies will not be able to reach us and all we'll see is what's in our own galaxy and I find that fascinating the sky will be a lot darker 
and then there's the um, the death of the universe where all that's left all the stars have gone out, all the galaxies have died and all that's left is black holes and black holes evaporate they do emit a certain amount of um, energy, radiation and they have calculated how long it would take for uh, black holes to evaporate and it's safe to say it's a very 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 how many varies can I say before I die and that won't be enough varies long time quite a while you know everything else is gone and there's nothing but black holes but eventually the last black hole dies and then there is literally nothing and if there is nothing time ends as well apparently um, and what happens then that would be interesting to see, except you couldn't see it because it's a black hole and you can't see it. But, you know, <laughs> to be hanging around in a void at that time um, might be pretty boring, actually. But I'm fascinated by it. Um, of course, quite how it would be possible to exist in such a time for... It's like, how? Are you hanging there in a spacesuit? Your oxygen's going to run out if you need oxygen, if you're basically immortal. Don't know, don't know, but these are things that I would like to know the answers to and to be around to see it, if you could see it. Yeah. I would take the immortality. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Gimme. <laughs> yeah. And probably if I had that, I would thoroughly regret it and want the off switch. Yeah, when when time and space and everything is done and the last black hole has evaporated, I want an off switch, please, because otherwise it'd be pretty damn boring. Actually, it'd probably be boring way before that. I imagine it would reach a point where you have seen it all, been there, done that, read the book, bought the t-shirt, and all of that. Yeah, I'll tell an example of how interested I am in that kind of science. I can show you in, well, the kind of stuff that I wear. You probably are familiar with it. I like t-shirts with things on them and that. Mm -mm. A misunderstood thing. A lot of people don't get how Schrodinger's cat works and they just think you've got a cat in a box and you don't know if it's alive or dead. That is not what Schrodinger's cat is all about. Yeah. Okay, I'll shut up now. Anyone else who's got any questions they would like answering in a video like this, ask a question in the comments below and begin with four Q&A so I know not to just answer in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching and do please watch some more. There'll be links down there to a playlist or something. Patreon? That's not even a word. You made it up. <laughs>